now that we've got the basics out of the way, it's time to talk about what kinds of simplification that we can do with radicals. It's not always possible to simplify a numeric radical all the way down to an integer or a whole number, but you can often partially simplify them using the rules for radicals. For example, if we look at the square root of 72, well, there is no whole number whose square is 72, and so you're not going to be able to write the square root of 2 equals some integer. But using the rules for radicals, we can pull this apart and then simplify part of it while leaving a little bit left over. There are many different methods for doing this simplification, but the one that I like is called the factor tree method, and it involves factoring your radicand. So in this case, 72 is our radicand, and we want to make a full factor tree for 72. So 72 is 8 times 9. Uh, 8 is 4 times 2. 9 is 3 times 3. And then 4 is 2 times 2. So we have fully factored our 72 into 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Um, in these situations, we only care about the numbers that are at the bottom of our tree, and so I usually underline them just to make clear. Those are the numbers that we care about. Once we have our factorization, the next step is to group our numbers together based on the index of the radical that we're trying to do. In this case, we're doing a square root, and so our index is equal to 2, and so that means that we want to group our numbers into pairs. So looking at our factors, we see a pair of 2's here, and we also see a pair of 3's here. Each of these groups is going to be enough to pull a single number out of the radical, right? So this group will pull one two out of the radical, and this group will pull one three out of the radical. So when we write it out, the square root of 72 is going to have a two outside the radical and a three outside the radical. And anything that we did not group gets left inside. In this case, we had one two left over. On the outside, we can do 2 times 3 gives us 6. And so the square root of 72 simplifies to 6 times the square root of 2. Now let's move on to the third root of 1080. The first thing to notice is that our index is 3. And now we need to make our factor tree. So to factor 1080, well, first I would notice that it must be divisible by 10 because it has a 0 on the end. It's 108 times 10. Uh, 108 is 2 times 54. 54 is 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3. 6 is 3 times 2. And 10 is 5 times 2. Now let's see what we can group together. Since our index is 3, we want to find groups of 3 numbers. Well, when I see 3 3's right here, and I also see 3 2's right here. And so when we write our expression out, the third root of 1080 is going to be equal to 3 times 2 times, now we also have a 5 that we didn't group up, and that one's going to stay inside the radical. Third root of 5. Once again, multiplying on the outside, 3 times 2 is 6 times the third root of 5, and there's our simplified expression. Now let's talk about how we simplify radicals when there are variables involved. So in this first example, we're looking at the square root of x to the 12th, Let's see if we can come up with a simplification before we get to any formal rules for anything. Now, the definition of the square root says that the square root of x to the 12th should be something where if we square it, we end up with x to the 12th. Now, it would make sense if you're going to have an x on the right-hand side of the equation, you'll need to have an x on the left-hand side. Now, there's not much else going on on the right-hand side of the equation, and so we don't have the ability to, say, put a coefficient in front of the x or anything like that. 
But what we could do, perhaps, is put an exponent on the x. And then the question becomes, well, what number could I put as that exponent so that I would end up with 12 as the exponent after I evaluated it? Well, if you remember the rule for exponents, when you have a power raised to a power, you end up multiplying the two powers together. So we need to put a number in the box here that when we multiply it by 2, we get 12. Well, that number is 6. So just from the definition of the square root, we can say that the square root of x to the 12th is equal to x to the 6th. Now the good news here is that you don't always have to write it out using the definition like we did a second ago. Uh, there's a shortcut that involves the index. So if you remember, the index of a square root is 2. And so what's the relationship that's going on here? We did 12 divided by 2 to get 6. So when your power is a multiple of the index, you can just divide to get the result. For instance, suppose we wanted to do the fourth root of y to the 20th power. Well, we can do 20 divided by 4 is 5, and that tells us the result would be y to the fifth power. Now, things don't always divide so nicely, which brings us to the second example, fifth root of k to the 23rd power. You should notice here that uh, 23 is not divisible by 5. So what can we do in this case to simplify? The key here is going to be to use the rules of radicals to break our single radical up here into two parts, one part that will simplify and the other part that will be left over. Now what we've got in this case is the fifth root of k to the 23rd power. And what we're going to do is break that up into two separate fifth roots that are multiplied together. What we'd like to do is put some of our k's under this one that will simplify, and the k's that are left over will go here, and they will not simplify. So rewriting the expression. We're going to have the fifth root of some number of k's here times the fifth root of some other number of k's here. And the question is, how many k's can we put here where it will simplify nicely, and how many k's will go here where it will be left over? So what we need for the first exponent is a number that is divisible by 5, which is our index. And we'd like that number to be as big as possible so that we can pull out as much of our radical as we can. And in this case, 20 happens to be the ideal number. Because if we do the fifth root of k to the 20th, we can use that division rule to turn that into k to the fourth. Now, since we put 20 of our k's in the first radical, the rest of the k's have to go in the second radical. And since we started off with 23, that means that 3 of our k's are going to go into the second radical. And that's the part that is not going to simplify. If you look at this second radical, we don't have enough k's in there to be able to divide. And so that's going to stay fifth root k to the third. So what we've discovered is that the fifth root of k to the 23rd power is equal to k to the fourth times the fifth root of k to the third. So we've seen how to simplify radicals with numbers, and we've seen how to simplify radicals with variables. Well, what happens when you have a radical that involves both numbers and variables? The news here is good. Uh, basically, to simplify a radical that involves both variables and numbers, uh, you can focus just on the number part and then just on each variable and then throw it all together at the end to get your final result. So looking at this first example, we can simplify the square root of 125 and the square root of x to the eighth and the square root of y to the fifth individually. So for the square root of 125, you can use the factor tree method that we've discussed already, and that simplifies to 5 times the square root of 5. For the square root of x to the eighth, you just have to remember that the index on a square root is 2, and then the division rule applies. 
we can do 8 divided by the index 2, which gives us 4, and that leaves us with x to the fourth. And that brings us to the square root of y to the fifth. In this case, it doesn't divide out nicely, so we can split it up into two separate square roots. If we take four of our y's and put them in the first radical and the remaining y in the second radical, it'll work out nicely. The square root of y to the fourth is y squared, and then the square root of y is left over. So we've simplified each individual piece here, but what does that tell us about the result for the original problem? Well, what we can do is take each of our original pieces, and we're going to throw them all together to get the final result for our radical. So on the outside, what we have is 5x to the fourth y squared. And then on the inside, we have a 5 from this leftover part here and a y from this leftover part here. So we'll have the square root of 5y. And that is our simplified result. Now let's turn our attention to the second example here, fourth root of 16a to the sixth, b to the eleventh. Uh, we can take the same strategy here. We will split up the 16 and the a to the sixth and the b to the eleventh and deal with those individually. So for the number part, we're looking at the fourth root of 16. Well, that happens to be a nice number. It's just 2. And next we have the a to the sixth. So we're looking at the fourth root of a to the sixth. And once again, this is one that we will need to split up into two parts. In the first part, if we put four of our a's here, that will work out nicely. And we'll have then two a's left over. The fourth root of a to the fourth is a. And the fourth root of a squared is just the fourth root of a squared. And then lastly, we have the b to the 11th fourth root, b to the 11. We'll take the same strategy of splitting it up. In this case, if we put eight of our b's in the first radical, we will then have three left over in the second. And the fourth root of b to the eighth simplifies to b squared, with the leftovers unchanged, fourth root, b to the third. The last thing to do is to take our three individual pieces and put them all together to represent the simplified original problem. So what that gives us, on the outside we will have 2a b squared. And then on the inside of the radical, uh, we don't have a number part in this case, but we do have a squared and b to the third. And there is our simplified radical.